Uh, thank you so much for keeping it Imani Television. This is Health, Hygiene and Wellness. My name is Barasa Saeni. Welcome to this maiden episode and today I'm privileged to host Dr. Robert Nyandika for this program. Thank you so much. We are going to discuss about Ebola, a disease that is ravaging our neighboring country, uh, Uganda. And Dr. Robert here is going to demystify a lot about the disease, the preventive measures, the causes, and also the signs and symptoms. So stay tuned for this educative program. Now, Dr. if we can just begin, what are the causes of Ebola? Or maybe you can define it. Maybe, maybe I can start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Ebola? Ebola. Yes, Ebola is a disease which is transmitted by a virus. And uh, we have about six types of viruses. These viruses are named according or as per the origin of the virus. Mm -hmm. We have, like, for example, we have the Zaire Ebola virus. Zaire. We have Sudan Ebola virus. Mm -hmm. DRC Congo Ebola virus. Mm -hmm. So we have those viruses, uh, it depends on where they originated from. Mm -hmm. We also have the Zaire Ebola virus, which is the most severe one. But only out of the the, the total viruses we have, mm -hmm. it is only four viruses which affect human beings. Mm -hmm. Others they affect uh, uh, non-human non primates. Those are animals, wild mm -hmm. animals. So these viruses, uh, uh, this is a somatic disease. When I talk of zoonotic disease, it means it is transmitted from animals to humans. humans. Yes, yes, that's how uh, the transmission is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, uh, you say that there are different strains for the area, Sudan, yes. depending on, now, the, uh, the, origin. on the origin of the country. Now, the one that is affecting our neighboring country, mm -hmm. where the outbreak was, okay, Uganda declared the outbreak on uh, 20th September 2022. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was an outbreak, a strain of Sudan, Sudan strain, mm -hmm. which uh, affected uh, one of the districts in Uganda, the Mopende. Mm -hmm. It affected Mopende. Yes. Then later on, it is spread to other four count, count districts, New York, they call them districts. Mm -hmm. It affected mostly the five districts. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, is, it was spreading towards the Congo side, the mm -hmm. Congo, yes. not towards the Kenya. So it was spreading towards those sides. So as a country where, you know, when there is a problem in another country, especially diseases, where these countries people interact, um, there is an influx of people, there is migration of people, you have to be prepared. Yes. So as a country, we are on the preparation. In fact, we are already prepared. Yes. In case we get a case, we are ready. You know how we can handle it. Uh, you just reminded me that uh, while I was growing up, I used to hear cases of Ebola in Congo mm -hmm. and the parts of Uganda. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, what, how can I say? Niukulendani kabisa machinani. Yeah, machinani kabisa machinani. And then there's a time iliisha kabisa. There yeah. are no cases of uh, Ebola yeah, in the DRC. These cases, mm -hmm. they, they, they are, we call them imagine and reimagine mm -hmm. diseases. They come, they go. They come, when we manage, they go, mm -hmm. and they come in a different way. There's no a special way that we can just handle the whole virus and it goes away uh, permanently. Mm, you know, this virus, so long as, there's what we call one health. One health means there is animals, eh? there is human being, yes. then it's, there is environment. These things interact. Mm -hmm. eh? There is no way you can separate them. Mm -hmm. We are always in contact with the animals, especially these wild animals, yes. uh, and the environment where they live. Mm -hmm. So some of these conditions, what is important, there is no way you can do away with them completely, so long as the three are there. Mm -hmm. The only thing we do is surveillance. We strengthen our surveillance mm -hmm. and do the necessary. We vaccinate the animals, we fascinate the human beings, yes. then we minimize the cases. We eliminate, we say we eliminate, we don't eradicate. Mm -hmm. There are diseases for eradication and there are diseases for elimination. Mm -hmm. 
So for elimination means you minimize cases up to zero or at the unmanageable level. So at times it is very hard to very hard to get this disease very complicated. Yeah. Okay, we come to that, the preventive uh, mm -hmm. measures, but right now, mm -hmm. I would like uh, you to just, maybe you can tell us about the signs mm -hmm. and symptoms of the okay. body. Maybe before the signs, right? Yes. Uh, let me talk of how we get these viruses mm -hmm. from animal to human beings. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the transmission is that uh, is through contact. Contact. Uh, it's either through direct contact with this uh, infected animals uh, or through consumption of animal products from an animal which is already infected yes mm -hmm. or we can get from person to person through contact if a person is infected mm -hmm. we can spread to another to a population mm -hmm. if the person is infected and the, the case has not been detected and managed so that's how we we get this uh, the transmission of the Ebola. Mm -hmm. Then, um, you know, we are a, we have risk factors. Uh -huh. Risk factors, especially the humans who are always in the forest. Let's say hunting, mm -hmm. hunters. Eh? Uh, hunters. There are people who depend on uh, wild meat. Yes, those are at a high risk. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, including health workers because they are. They can easily get into contact with oh, cases yes. and know it. You know? Mm -hmm. Then those officers who work in the forest, foresters, the yes. yes. foresters and those ascaris who keep mm -hmm. take care of the animals. They are also at the high yes. risk. So if these people, if these cases are not well detected, yes, it can affect the whole country. So the most important thing here is to strengthen our surveillance. That's why at times the Minister of Health and the Minister of uh, Agriculture yes. and the Wildlife we work together because they have to control these uh, cases from their side yes. and we also manage our cases from this side. Uh, because so it's collaborate. we collaborate. Yes. When it comes to outbreaks, we collaborate. And at times they have their own surveillance system, we have our own surveillance system. Uh -huh. So when we interact, we can see ways of managing those those cases. Yes. So when I come to signs, some of the signs and symptoms. Yes. And there are many signs and symptoms. Uh, and if you are not careful, uh, sometimes it's, it's very challenging when it comes to the diagnosis uh -huh. because uh, the incubation period of Ebola is two. Let's say it's one to twenty-one days. Mm -hmm. But uh, you cannot, uh, the person cannot spread the disease during the incubation period. Not unless he has shown signs and symptoms. Uh -huh. So it can be her carrier, but it cannot transmit the disease yes. until it shows signs and symptoms. So the signs and symptoms must first display. Yes, they must come out. Mm -hmm. Then you, that's when you say the person now is spreading mm -hmm. the disease. So some of these signs, they resemble other diseases, mm -hmm. like uh, malaria and the typhoid. Uh -huh. They share the signs and symptoms. So you might be treating malaria or typhoid. Well, someone is if happy. you don't do proper screening, mm -hmm. maybe somebody will be having it more. Mm -hmm. you, you see? Yes. That, those are the challenges we have. But uh, the, the, commonest, the, the, common, the most common uh, signs is a headache, there is fever, there is a uh, sore throat, uh, which can make you suspect now this is not malaria. Mm -hmm. We have sore throat, mm -hmm. we have muscle pains and pains of the joints. Mm -hmm. We have uh, now the ones that make loss of appetite, the common ones, loss of appetite. Is nausea among, uh, uh, among them? No, mm -hmm. there is diarrhea, there is vomiting. Those are the common signs with, which resemble other diseases. Mm -hmm. But now, you will continue suspecting when the person is now bleeding, there is bleeding from natural orifices, mm -hmm. the ears, the nose, the eyes, that's now when you suspect. Actually, that is a common sign that everyone talks about. Yes, yeah. Yeah. now this one mm -hmm. is so dangerous. It might be ever. All of cases, you know, we don't, uh, as health workers, we don't declare a disease like that until we confirm 
data uh, through a part of information that uh, this person is suffering from this and this. So when we got Ebola, we get Ebola cases, we have to take samples and necessary steps uh -huh. for us to confirm it is really Ebola. Now, uh, talking about the bleeding sign, mm -hmm. what causes it? How does it come out? It is science. It mm -hmm. affects the virus affects, you know, the normal attack, the, the, the body defense mechanism. Yes. These are the white blood cells. They attack the white blood cells. They attack those elements that causes clotting of the blood. Mm -hmm. When they kill that element of growth, uh, 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 clotting of blood, now blood comes out to natural. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it comes from any part of the body. Uh, those are the signs and, and the symptoms of Ebola. Mm -hmm. Yes. How can we prevent that? Mm, prevention, uh, it, it, the way we prevent uh, these other uh, diseases like uh, COVID, mm -hmm. uh, the COVID-19, all those measures we are using yes. in COVID-19, this the same, same COVID-19 and Ebola, yes. they are in the same class, including malware. Mm -hmm. These are the viruses of the same family. So the preventive measures we use in COVID uh -huh. are the same that we use in a uh -huh. Ebola. Uh -huh. Yes, isolation, if you identify a case, you isolate the case, eh? don't come into contact with uh, a, a confirmed case, uh -huh. eh? hand washing, eh? avoid uh, handling uh, objects which you don't know whether they have been uh, contaminated with body fluids, including sweat, uh -huh. urine, eh? Yes. Any any body saliva saliva yes it, it, they can, the viruses can stay for a longer period in those objects or in those objects mm -hmm. if you don't know so we avoid touch touching those things and in case you are tired mm -hmm. we advise for handy and sanitation mm -hmm. you have to go hand and cheap, wash your hands do some places no that mm -hmm. this is a case mm -hmm. where maybe I'm just having we are family we are staying together then. Mm -hmm. I realized that one of, one of the members in my family maybe is uh, bleeding mm -hmm. from all the, uh, the natural reasons. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, what we do, you, you communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Ebola and the COVID, the only difference is that uh, Ebola is more severe. This is very dangerous than COVID. Yeah, yeah very dangerous than COVID. Very how dangerous. long does the bleeding take uh, when one starts to bleed? Uh, I said it, it can come out, it come towards the end of the incubation period mm -hmm. uh, after these other complications are shown. Now so after incubation, the, the period, it's full blast. It, yeah, it is full. Uh, Once you have started breathing, mm -hmm. that's a danger sign. Mm -hmm. You are likely to die. Not unless, uh, you know, breathing, breathing without control, mm -hmm. you, are, you will die. Yes. So the, the case has to be managed. Uh, What's the first step that one can... The first step is once you have identified that case, yes. or you have suspected the case, communicate to health, any health worker. Mm -hmm. The health worker can take action. And immediately, you are, we advise people not to transfer those cases to facilities. Mm -hmm. To communicate, and then we advise or we take the national action because those cases are not allowed to interact with others. Uh -huh. Uh, we isolated them. We can yeah. isolate them either at home, so long as we get the environment is favorable for isolation, we can isolate the kids from home and they quarantine other family members mm -hmm. because they are primary contacts of the, of the case, of the suspect index. We call them index case. Uh -huh. These are uh, scientific names. Uh -huh. Index case. So the index case we isolate, the, uh, the primary contacts, including even the secondary contacts. We, we we quarantine uh -huh. to see to monitor them and see whether they are being infected. They are infected or not. Uh -huh. So if a case comes to a high facility, uh -huh. that case we have advised our health workers to identify what we call holding rooms, holding rooms or holding areas. Uh -huh. They are not supposed to refer those cases to another facility. Uh -huh. They stay there. They stay then they are managed within that facility. How can we, uh, you say that we can prevent Ebola? Mm, it, 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 prevention is through all those measures. Mm -hmm. I say uh, uh, avoid 
uh, maybe come into contact with wild animals. The wild animals, I mean, like, for example, uh, the chimpanzee. Uh, they're the most common. The most common, chimpanzee. <laughs> monkeys. People eat monkeys. All these animals, people eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and the rocks. Uh, I've never seen people eating monkeys. No. People eat monkeys. Wow. Uh, people eat monkeys, antelopes, chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Uh, there is a strain which affects pigs, but it does not affect human beings. Pigs? Yes, there is a strain. Mm -hmm. One. The less than, less than uh, five months. Mm -hmm. It affects pigs, but it, it, it doesn't affect human beings. Eh? So, such animals, we, we, during those outbreaks, we should uh, avoid coming in contact with them. Then, food parts, which are common, native American parts, popo, popo, yes, popo. People interact with popo, especially in Uganda. Mm -hmm. There are people who, who, who live in caves. caves. Yeah. Actually, I've seen there, there are areas where bats are just so many. There are so many. Uh -huh. There are so many. Even in some towns, yes. there are places where you can find bats, but mm -hmm. you cannot tell which kind of bats. Yes. Uh -huh. So we avoid uh, 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 those bats coming in contact or coming in contact with their, uh, their droppings and whatever. Mm -hmm. and urine, so that we minimize the cases. Then we advise uh, minimize movement from. Uh, an infected from an infected area to an infected area. Now, for example, we are advising people minimize our movement from Uganda, our Kenya outside to Uganda. Our people interacting. Mm -hmm. There are people yes. who have families in Uganda, mm -hmm. so they normally go to Uganda. So we tell them, no, there is an outbreak. You reduce the interaction. Can you introduce in the in, 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 reduce the interactions? Mm -hmm. Can you avoid eh, do, uh, moving across the border? Mm -hmm. eh? When you go across the border, can you follow the right procedure? Because we know that we might have our officers at the border points mm -hmm. who do the screening. But you know, we are Kenyans, people, and other Africans. They yes. pass Panyaluts. Mm -hmm. Peter Panyaluts, Ako Uganda, we can show them Ako Kenya. So those are the, the kind of information. We, we call them risk communication. Mm -hmm. We tell people this is the situation. It is you to make. A decision. a decision. Yeah. The situation is not good. Can you make the right decision? Yes. Take care of yourself and then your yeah. family and the rest. Maybe a question just about screening the tally. Mm. When you are doing screening, for example, at the border there, mm. uh, when I, I, maybe a Uganda is coming to Kenya and they do screening at the border, mm. what do you discover? It's just do you discover the virus in the incubation period or uh, mm -hmm. it's now? No, you, when you screen, mm -hmm. you screen for maybe temperature. You can look at the temperature. Mm -hmm. They are used on thermoguns. Mm -hmm. uh, thermoguns are the ones that we normally use for screening. If you get, of course, there are so many cases with high temperature. Yes. But you can easily, the ones, clinicians know, how we know. Mm -hmm. If I look at you, I can know. This is not maybe distant data. Yeah. Oh. But uh, temperature alone cannot tell you to isolate a person. There must be other there signs. There must be other signs. You ask, you communicate with a, the, the, the person. person. Yes. How is she feeling? How is she feeling? Then it talks of sore throats, yeah? and muscle pains. Then you start querying the, the, the clients, the characters of the car. <laughs> Then, if you feel that this person needs further screening, you are the vice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the government had uh, placed some funds mm -hmm. in order to cut off for the spread of uh, Ebola virus in Kenya. But uh, many people are, are against the, 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 the idea that maybe we should wait until we get one case in order to have the funds or something. As a, as, a, as a medical practitioner, you, you know, uh, lay, lay, lay people can talk anything. Mm -hmm. We wait for a, a disease to strike, mm -hmm. that's now we start rushing, eh? mm -hmm. rushing, looking for funds. No, we should be ready with all the requirements, mm -hmm. including the stocks, just in case of anything. If it strikes right now, mm -hmm. you know, some of these viral diseases, one case is an outbreak. And it can spread within a very short period. Mm -hmm. So 
If we get one case like now and you are not prepared, by the time you will get prepared, majority of the population will be affected and will be not able to control it. So it is always good, we call it emergency preparation uh, kit. It must be there. It must be there. Just in case of anything. I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's not something that I would wish for, but why is it that uh, Kenya has not even found even one case? We don't, we don't, we don't uh, in fact, we are praying God that we should not get that case. Mm -hmm. Because if we get that case, then uh, everything will stop. Mm -hmm. And you know, when uh, everything stops, the economy of the country goes, we can crash. Yes. yes. So we request that. Uh, or we are very, very hard that we should not get that case. Can we attribute that to our, maybe our hygiene? Mm, our surveillance system is perfect. Uh, we have perfect surveillance system. Uh, in every county, we have a surveillance system. Mm -hmm. At the border points, we have very strong surveillance system. Mm -hmm. And mostly uh, during outbreaks, they work 24 hours, mm -hmm. rock, mm -hmm. night and the day. Because some people can cross the border during a threat. So uh, uh, then there is a time our border points are closed. You know, we have to work with, to, together with interior, the Ministry of Interior. Mm -hmm. So people should rest. When we have to work as a rest, that those crosser points, uh, doors are crossed, gates are crossed, mm -hmm. and then the interior is there with the security. Nobody will really cross. So our surveillance system is perfect. That's why we are not getting cases. Mm -hmm. All right, we are taking a short break here at Health, Hygiene and Wellness. We'll be back in a short while. Uh, welcome back to Health, Hygiene and Wellness. I'm having Dr. In the uh, in the show. We are talking about Ebola, the causes, prevention, the symptoms, and all that about uh, the Ebola virus. And uh, we'll just go straight away to the question. Mm -hmm. Now, we, are, we have reached uh, the management, maybe management of cases. Uh, prescription. Mm -hmm. Prescription, uh, okay, we start from once we have identified our case, we take the samples. We take the samples to the laboratory, not any other laboratory. We send the samples to Nairobi. Uh -huh. uh, that's a, a chemical laboratory. Uh -huh. Then samples takes within 24 hours, you get the results. Uh, there is a, a kind of test, we call it the PCR. That's polymerase chain reaction test. Specifically, it's the one which is called contacted with some of these viruses in building COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So once we get uh, the results, we can know now the status of, of the county or the country, whether we have a case or not. But before that, we have to manage these cases. These cases, we isolate them. Then we give them what we call supportive care. We have supportive care. Support where you manage the conditions. Yes. If it is headache, you manage the headache. Uh -huh. If it is fever, you manage the fever. If it is diarrhea, you manage the diarrhea. That's how we deal with these cases. Mm, okay, if there is a vaccine, but uh, you know, these diseases, they are not always with us. If you manufacture so many vaccines, you will be wasting. And each vaccine, if a viral, it costs a lot of money. Yes. So uh, they are in. Normally used for selective cases. In case there is a, a severe outbreak, like now in Uganda, yes. they might be using some vaccines. Uh, then we have also, of course, we have um, how most viral diseases are not treatable. They are not treatable. Yes. But they we prevent them. But uh, with Ebola, there was research which was done. I think there were two uh, drugs which were recommended for treatment of those cases. Of which, which means there is management of the cases and this, this treatment. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. Now, uh, how long does it take uh, isolating someone who is asthmatic? Mm, you know, when it comes to isolation, now it depends on the individual immunity system. Uh -huh. Yeah, some people can take a short period 
it will get cured or to get red, others can take a long period depending on the body immune system. How about average? Uh, mm, from the cases. From the incubation period it can take even an hour. Then you get wet. But once once you get you recover, it doesn't mean the viruses gets out of your system immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can stay for a, quite some time. Uh, then so it, uh, slowly by slowly you let it. For example, mm, there is a research which was done and they say that uh, some of these fighters, for example, let me use someone. The virus can stay in semen for quite some time. So once you recover from from maybe you are case, mm -hmm. don't lash uh -huh. to do their yeah. sexual act uh -huh. because you can easily transmit those viruses to your partner. Uh -huh. So you take that time until you are approved now, testing another testing and done, mm -hmm. and you get Proof that eh, now the viruses are not there. Uh, okay. So sometimes they take uh, their own video, stay in the uh, those body fluids. No, when we're talking about uh, body fluids, I didn't even remember the other one. So the body fluids are like urine, <laughs> blood, those are blood, sweat. I didn't think about semen. Yes, yeah, semen, yeah, it's the semen is there. So <laughs> it, it is a body fluid. So it means the body can also be transmitted. Yes, yeah, the viruses uh, can go into the site of the semen. But it through sexual, uh, uh, direct, if the person was not infected, mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, there is no clear proof that it, during intercourse mm -hmm. you can really get, uh -huh. uh, but it, through the flu, the flu. Mm -hmm. but uh, if the person was infected, mm -hmm. no, was infected, there is a possibility of these viruses going to the side of the semen. And when you come into contact with those semen, you will get it. Wow. Yeah. Now I understand. Yes. Ah, uh, so it's just a matter of us yeah. uh, still keeping it. Yes, so keeping it, 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 all the necessary precautions mm -hmm. we are given by the, the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. Let's follow those precautions and then we, we pray about that we should not get the other case. Uh -huh. And we pray for Uganda, how we are now brothers and sisters. Yes. Uh, I know the Australian system is not bad, uh, they, they will manage. They will manage. Yeah. We've reached the end of our program. I hope that you have learned something from uh, this program, Health Hygiene and Wellness. We were discussing about Ebola today and uh, I hope that you have found something constructive. And uh, Let's continue keeping it safe, maintain uh, hygiene uh, as well as following the safety precautions that we've been advised by our medical practitioners and all will be safe. Till next time, my name is Barasa Saini Nicholas and uh, uh, a part in short is that um, okay. as a country, as a county, we are prepared. We are prepared so people should not worry. Uh, if we have been planning uh, in coordination with the, uh, in partnership with the national government. We are very informed, we have formed the necessary teams, uh, the rapid response teams in the areas of county. So in case, and we have identified our isolation areas and our old areas, so in case of anything, yes. I think we are, we are ready. So, but people should also uh, support us. Mm -hmm. How? By following what they are, educated on what they are told. Uh -huh. So because if we say now health workers who can do this and the people, don't do their own, then we will not manage this, some of these conditions when they come. Okay, yes. Till next time, uh, I'll see you. Thank you so much.